say that I am a bit late to the fall festival, but we're still gonna talk about autumnal makes. Now, can we even properly chat about autumnal makes, fall makes, however you wanna call it, without a warm cup of something? I don't think so. And yes, we got something in this cup. Well, today I may be drinking a Victorian London fog. One of my favorite ways to start the autumnal season is actually by making syrups. Now, each year I try to pick a bit of a different syrup. Last year we did a pumpkin spice syrup following James Hoffman's recipe. I will link the video here and in the description box below. I feel like I'm just gonna keep saying that. So uh, anything I mention will be linked in the description box below. And if you don't find it linked there, please message me and I will add it. Now what makes that James Hoffman syrup different from all the other pumpkin syrups is that you actually literally juice a pumpkin. That's how you start. So this year, I decided to try a different syrup. And I'd seen this trend of doing like apple caramel on Instagram. And so I thought I'd give it a try. Now I don't have any video footage to show you of that, but I can show you what the caramel looks like right now. So. Editing me, please insert video here. Now the instructions that I followed to make this syrup literally said, take your apple cider and boil it down until you have like an eighth left over. I don't think the apples that were in my cider were sweet enough because it was very, very tart. And while it did thicken, it wasn't a syrup consistency. So I did add three quarter cups of sugar, no, three eighth cups of sugar to my one cup of boiled down apple cider. And that did make a very thick caramel consistency. However, please do not add it to any tea drinks in which you are going to add milk because it will curdle milk. Ask me how I know. Cheers. Next on our fall, autumn, cozy makes is definitely baking. Now I know a lot of people don't consider themselves bakers, but I really think recipes are a fun way to mark a season because there are certain recipes that I like to just make when September hits all the way up to possibly January, which is the colder month here in Florida. And then, you know, you wanna transition your recipes out and that way you're kind of always making something to please your soul during a specific season. Now, I'm not saying any of these recipes are restricted to a season. You can make them whenever you want. I'm not the boss of you. You are the boss of you, okay? So we can start with cinnamon rolls. I mean, hello, you kind of, you had to have expected me to start with cinnamon rolls. However, there's so many different variations that you can do to cinnamon rolls. My favorite one is a recipe that I developed uh, for pumpkin sourdough cinnamon rolls and I hadn't made them in a long time. I kind of forgot where I wrote the recipe, but I found the recipe this morning. So I will be sharing that in this coming newsletter, okay? So next Sunday, even though I'm recording this on a Monday, September, what's today? Today is September 16th. Okay, I'm recording this on Monday, September 16th, but on Sunday, for you, it'll be tomorrow. On the newsletter that comes out, I'm gonna be including the ingredients for my pumpkin sourdough cinnamon rolls. Now, this is the recipe that I've made many a times, but uh, you guys know when we make recipes, we take tend to do a whole little spin on things. So hopefully try it, let me know if it works for you, let me know if it doesn't work for you. Another trend that I wanna try this year is to make apple pie cinnamon rolls. And essentially what that is gonna be, it's gonna be a cinnamon roll dough and I'm gonna make apple pie filling with uh, the apples cut very, very small and a very, very thick filling. You can, of course, buy your own canned pumpkin apple pie filling, but um, I'm not a huge fan of those. They tend to be a little bit on the sweeter side for me. And while well, uh, I have been hit with the too sweet bug, okay? Yeah, now I ha I eat something and I'm like, that's too sweet. Or the biggest compliment, that's not too sweet, that was good. <laughs> so I tend to like to control the sugar portion in the things that I am making, hence why I, I cook my own meals. 
hey. And you know, I think that is one of the greatest forms of self-love is taking care of your body by putting intention and thought into the meals that you feed it. So a little, little tidbit there. I'm gonna take a break to slurp down my tepid piss tea, okay? Okay, so we've talked about the cakes portion of the Crochet Cakes channel. <laughs> now let's discuss the crafty version. <sighs> now, during the autumn, I typically skew towards kitschy home decor. And now that is not to say that I step away from being a garment maker because we do need outfits for autumn, hence me making the pumpkin granny square vest, which I am so happy so many of you enjoyed. Thank you so much for all your lovely comments and for sharing the video and just interacting with me through it. I love that even though some of you don't like granny squares, you still watch the video that, that made me very happy. <laughs> so, Again, thank you for sharing a little bit of kitschy granny square love with me. Now what I say when I'm into kitschy home decor, we're not talking obviously demure home decor for autumn, no, 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 I'm talking in your face, okay? We are making a pumpkin hearth and home, we're making an indoor pumpkin patch or, you know, really a caveat. When I say decorate for autumn, I usually mean Halloween. Mm, yes, the front of my house tends to have a mixture of Halloween and fall. So if I were to name what I'm decorating my home as, what my goal is when I decorate my home, I'm gonna have to name it a pumpkin tea witch apothecary. I think we're good with that. I'm talking about little witch boots, little witch dolls, like Wendy Witch, which I started crocheting last year and I didn't finish. So I do hope to have Wendy Witch finished for this year, and I'll link that pattern in the description box below. Now, the reason that I skew towards a pumpkin tea witch apothecary vibe is because I put my decorations, or I leave them up, all the way up to Dia de los Muertos, which is the 2nd of November, and then I remove all the very Halloween-y aspects of that decor. So anything that is going to be more explicitly autumn stays up until after uh, the family getting together. Now, if you need a more visual representation by what I mean for pumpkin tea witch apothecary, because hey, I'm a visual learner too, I'm gonna put a link to my autumn mood board in the description box below. You will see it's just like a little bit warm, moody, and uh, definitely involves a lot of warm drinks as we discussed. Now to start the kitschy pumpkin decor, we of course need crochet pumpkins or you know, knit pumpkins or felt pumpkins, whatever kind of pumpkins you got, whatever kind of pumpkins you find. Maybe you're not a maker, but you're here for ideas. Pumpkins, okay. I don't think we can go wrong with them. And every year I try to crochet a different pumpkin pattern. I have done a video tutorial for a pumpkin myself, but you know, I try to try other people's pumpkin patterns because there's so much creativity out there. So many beautiful ways of making pumpkins, so many ideas that I was like, huh, that is brilliant. And right now, boop, 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 I'm gonna surround myself with all of my favorite pumpkins. Now. Some of them I haven't made myself, namely my sewn pumpkin pillow. I did not make that. I found it thrifted for $5. I was not gonna leave it at the thrift store, okay? And also another one of my favorite makes is the pumpkin pillow cushion. I do have a, t a tutorial for that in my channel if you're interested and it uses burnout blanket extra. So you can actually work it up very quickly in one day. And as long as you have the stuffing available with you, you can really, really finish that project in one day, which is an exciting prospect. But maybe you yourself prefer a more traditional pillow shape. I got you. There are so many beautiful pillow patterns on Pinterest, but also Caroline, mother of Mind and Muse Crafts, has a beautiful pumpkin pattern that I am tempted to make over and over again. I have in fact made it twice. Uh, it, she actually designed it to be a tapestry or a wall art. More on that topic a little bit down the line. But I just decided why don't I crochet a back and we make it a pumpkin cushion. And it's one of my favorites because it adds a little bit of Spanish spice into my life, okay? If you find that, you know, you're not that drawn to pumpkins, that is okay, okay? We have a little nature 
for everyone. So acorns, I also think are a great make during the autumnal season because not only can you use them all throughout autumn, but you can leave them all the way up until January. There is something just so warmth inducing about acorns. I don't know what it is, but there is. So we could go, you know, if you live in a place that has acorns, traditionally, you can collect acorns, just make sure they don't have any holes, okay? Because then you have uh, unwanted little guests in your house, just saying. And if you wanna avoid those little natural critters, then you can, of course, crochet your own acorns. I did an acorn bookmark and I shared that with my newsletter subscribers last year. So I think what I'll do is I will do a blog post and I will put the picture of the instructions in that blog post. So if you wanna make a acorn bookmark, you can of course make it. It's a very fast make. And if you wanna use bigger yarn, it also works if you stuff it and you sew it together. It makes like a little hanging acorn if you wanna make a garland. So we have that. But what I'm looking forward to eventually adding to my apothecary is an acorn basket and I have this pattern from Emily of Make E. I don't think she designs or sells patterns anymore but I could be mistaken. Anyway I have this acorn basket pattern from her and uh, I want to make it. I just I keep telling myself I don't have the right yarn. I don't have the right yarn so that's why I haven't made it. But here's to maybe potentially making it this year although I'm not sure because I, I have three garment patterns on the go and one of them is a color work sweater that's knit and I'm crocheting it because hey why not be an autumn rebel okay <laughs> if you can't collect natural acorns or if you don't want to crochet acorns and you don't want to knit acorns you can of course felt them go to the store get some or or you could take maybe those Easter eggs if you have any in your house and you can paint them and turn them into acorns up. Also, I know I'm like sharing all my favorite autumnal makes, but I wanna know yours, okay? So please, in the comments below, tell me what are your favorite things to make during autumn, and maybe you don't like autumn. That's okay, you know? Sometimes I think we tend to think one season is better than the other, and to us, maybe that is true, but to nature, all seasons are very, very important. So. I'm not gonna diss any season that is your favorite. You can also feel free to tell me that in the description, um, in the comments. <laughs> now, if none of these 3D makes strike your fancy, then I might interest you in some wall art. And my first tip is to combine your need for wall art or your wants for wall art with a cozy hobby. And that is coloring. So coloring, I had to give like myself permission to like, you're an adult, but you can still color. Luckily, that was during the time of adult coloring books becoming a huge thing. And thanks to Kennedy of Cozy K, I found a favorite coloring book brand. The company's Creative Haven, and I do have some of their coloring books linked in my Amazon storefront. But for this autumn season, I have two recommendations. Just, you don't need to follow these, of course. One of them is going to be, of course, their Autumn. And uh, I, love, I love this, I love this. And the other one is Home, because during Autumn, we stay home a lot, right? And we want to picture all these cozy little corners that maybe we don't have space to, in our homes, or maybe we just don't have the time to dedicate to create it, but we still wanna imagine that cozy space. Then you can, of course, just tear pages out of these coloring books and frame them, or you could even color them and frame them. Now for coloring, I, I don't know why I started with markers, uh, but <laughs> then I graduated, not graduated, but I thought, you know, if we're going down this coloring road, might as well get some color pencils. And I really like these that I got from Amazon as well. They're from a company called Calor. They are soft core color pencils, but I think you get a very good variety of colors here. There are 70, yes, 72 colors. And it gives you a nice range of colors to play around with, especially for the autumnal season. 
Other ways that we can fill our home with kitschy autumnal things are our tablescapes, and we can set these up with very kitschy coasters, uh, mug rugs, as well as table runners. I have done all well too. I did a table runner, which I shared with you already, but I've also sewn coasters, and these I did, there was no really science behind them. I saw a Quiet Moments vlog from Sandra of Cherry Heart, and I thought, uh, yeah, I want to do that. So this was years ago, by the way. So I literally just uh, <laughs> took an Amazon Prime package, cut out roughly the shape of a pumpkin, and what I do is literally just go around in my scraps looking for pieces that I can put together to create my little pumpkin shapes. And they tend to be either off cuts of fabric or pieces. So generally it would look something like this. And the last autumnal thing that I wanna to touch on before we move to a non-autumnal thing that you may wanna consider starting in autumn, the last thing I wanna talk about is yarn. If you don't have any time to crochet anything, but you have yarn in a lot of what you consider to be autumnal colors, because I know that pastels are very in right now. So if you have that, just put little baskets around your house with colors that you consider to be fall themed and make them little bundles of joy just around your house. And you saved yourself a little bit of time, which you maybe didn't have, by just putting these little bundles of joy around your house. And who knows, maybe you'll even be inspired to pick one up and start a little project. And the reason this came to mind was because I am looking at a specific yarn from We Crochet and it is Yakish in the color Gilded. <laughs> she is beautiful. She is beautiful. And I think she will be coming into my stash and becoming a vest. Maybe. And lastly, some things that might be recommended to start in the autumn that don't have anything to do with autumn is your Christmas gifts. <laughs> now, actually, this might be a little late depending what you want to make as a gift. Uh, it might be a little late to start, but we can make cutesy small things as gifts for Christmas. You know, we can start by making a little garland that's possible to finish in time for Christmas. Uh, if you want to do a little coaster oven mitt set, also possible to finish in time for Christmas. If you want to do little things like that, go get it, okay? Go get it. And if you don't finish it by the 25th of December, my advice to you is to adhere to a Puerto Rican Christmas and take your Christmas all the way up to the 6th of December, possibly 8th, 9th, or 10th, okay? Whenever you finish that make that was meant to be a Christmas gift, it's Christmas. So, this year, I really only have one plan, and that is to make my husband's sweater. Every year I try to make my husband a garment, and last year <laughs> he didn't get it until our anniversary, which we celebrated in Japan. We were very, very fortunate to have saved enough money for it, and I'll put a picture of the finished sweater. This was the Panadero sweater, and he really liked the fact that it was so lightweight, but if you can see, the color pooling just makes the finished item look slanted. Like it makes him look like he's at a diagonal all the time and it gets to me. So I wanna make him another one. And he chose a yarn this time as well. He decided on Kobu, yeah, Kobu, Lion Bar Kobu in the color olive green. Uh, I do have some of that in my stash because I'm using it to make my Love Magic sweater version two. So I hope to still have some leftover so I can start a sweater for him. If not, I will just purchase more. So crafty wise, those are all the things that I had to share with you. But I also, before we part ways, want to share a very crafty evening idea with you. Okay, so let's cozy up together, make ourselves a nice brew, pick a hobby, and get cozy.